Um, I, I come at this um, not as particularly as a housing expert. I got into housing basically because Grenfell Tower happened in one of the parishes that I'm responsible for. And um, I, I was then asked to be the, uh, the vice chair of the Archbishop's Commission on Housing, Church and Community. And really the, the idea behind the Archbishop's Commission right from the very beginning was that we don't just need to build more housing units. Uh, we need to build more functioning uh, and healthy communities. And the housing has a big role to play in the construction of communities. And I just want to begin with, if you like, a broader cultural philosophical point, I guess, is, which is that there, there are a number of trends in our society that maybe militate against community. One is, if you like, that kind of libertarian individualism, that sort of, if you like, the idea of the autonomous individual, freed from the demands of others, you know, freedom to do what I want as long as it doesn't offend anybody else, which tends to, to, to encourage us to see our neighbours as a, as a threat, not a gift. Um, on the other side, we've got a kind of tribalism uh, that, um, you know, that uh, you know, love for those who are like us, love for our family, our friends, our tribe, our nation, which will always leave out the immigrant, the ex-offender, the person who doesn't quite fit in. And that what we actually need in place of both of those is a rediscovery of this revolutionary idea that the primary object of our love is actually our neighbour. Um, that at the heart of Christian faith, of course, is that call to love God and to love your neighbour. And this really revolutionary idea that the, my primary task is to not love not just my friends and my family or my tribe, but the person who happens to live next door to me, which is a truly revolutionary idea. Uh, now, with that in mind, what does that look like in housing and what's our responsibility towards our neighbour? What does it mean to love your neighbour in the world of housing? And what kind of housing builds strong neighbourhoods? Uh, in the Commission, what we did right from the very beginning was to stand back and say, well, actually, one of the things that we, we lack in the housing uh, world and debate, and particularly, you know, we found that in talking to the government and others, is, is a big picture of what good housing looks like. And so we, uh, looking into our own Christian story, but we came up with five key values as to what good housing uh, was all about. And those five key values, um, they all begin with the same letter. You can tell I'm a preacher at the end of the day. Um, uh, they are that uh, good housing is sustainable. It uh, fits with the local good environment. It doesn't drain the resources of the world in which we live. It's safe. Uh, from intrusion or from damage, from fire, from flood. It's stable, enables people to put down roots in the community so they feel they can stay and places can be made where people can feel stable in their community life. It's sociable. It enables community to take place. It's, it's housing that enables people to come in and out and, and invite their neighbours in. You need community space to enable that to happen. And it's satisfying. It's a place where you actually enjoy coming home to. And you, you enjoy living there. It has a sense of kind of, a, uh, of, of aesthetic beauty about it as well. So it's sustainable, safe, stable, sociable, and satisfying. Now, we added one more factor to that, one more S, if you like. It's not a, not a, a descriptor of housing, but it's a, it's, a, it's a factor without which the housing crisis will not be solved. And that is the element of sacrifice. And that's obviously, of course, a really important theme within Christian faith. But uh, a feeling of the, the feeling of the commission was that much of the cost of the housing crisis at the moment is borne by a particular group of people, people are living in unaffordable, uh, overcrowded, unsafe accommodation. And what we need is an approach to housing where that sense of sacrifice and cost is borne across the board uh, by government, by housing associations, by developers, uh, by landowners, including ourselves, the church, that uh, we, we bear that sacrifice across the board. We focused in the commission on the crisis of affordability, that uh, we feel that the, the, the crisis will not be solved just by building more houses. In the last 20 years, we've had 3 million new houses being built. What that's resulted in is 2.5 million new private rented properties. Um, and that doesn't tend always to lead um, you know, to the kind of stability that, that we need, as, as Toby's been pointing out already. Um, we wanted also to say that we this commission is not one where we're going to say, here's the problem, hand it over to government, you sort it out, because we're aware that we as the church, the Church of England, we have a role to play in this, is this as well. We are major landowners ourselves. Uh, we own, as the church commissioners, for example, own 100,000 acres, or almost uh, of which 6,000 acres is developable. Uh, and so we've um, been in conversation with the church commissioners about how that land is used in a creative way to develop affordable housing. But we've also said that to local churches. And one of the things we wanted to say to local churches across the country is you can play a role in housing in your local areas. About 90% of local churches, and remember the Church of England, one of the things we have is a, a presence in every single community across this country. Every village, every town, every suburb has a church in it. 93% uh, of those are involved in some kind of um, delivery of uh, addressing food poverty, food, food banks, 
or giving out food parcels or whatever. Only about 10% are involved in some form of housing need. And very often that's to do with immediate homeless um, provision. And what we wanted to say to churches is that you can be involved in all kinds of different ways. And we give a number of examples uh, in the report about ways in which local churches can get involved in local housing need. And we've got examples, for example, of a, a group of churches in Keswick in the Lake District who got together, identified a piece of land that they own and set up a community land trust and simply enabled half a dozen or about a dozen houses to be built on that for local uh, affordable housing. Uh, we've got an example of a, of a church in North London that decided to campaign that all those applying to be councillors in their local elections should sign up to say that the policy of the council should be 50% of every housing de development should be affordable. And... Um, uh, they won that campaign, and so now that's officially part of the the, 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 um, the council's policy. And we've got a number of other examples of churches that enable drop-in centres for people with housing need to come in and find help uh, linking them to local housing departments and so on. So all kinds of examples of ways in which local churches, as local community groups, can get involved in housing need within their local area as part of their core mission of what they're about. That's all I want to say. Um, time is up. I shall hand back to Helen. <laughs>